Hear the Easter Gospel from Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly and with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Easter Gospel. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us sing together, Christ is risen. Christ, Jesus Christ is risen today.
Easter morning. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Alleluia. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Alleluia. Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace we now share with each other. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our hearts and minds the joy and wonder of the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Easter is always a challenging day to preach, not because there's so little to say, but because there's so much to say. And along with that, most who listen to an Easter message know the story. They know the significance of the day, how central it is to our life and faith. And this Easter is a little more challenging. Everything's been ratcheted up a bit, don't you think? Today, the very reality of death is so much at the forefront of our minds. The words from Jesus on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those words are very real to us, words we can identify with, words that in some way or other have kind of seeped into our hearts and into our minds. Death this Easter is not as remote as it was a year ago, or at least for most of us. I've heard many lament that it's too bad we don't get to have Easter this year. I understand what they mean. It's not like it, the stay isn't going to happen. It's just that it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be us together hearing the church bells ring and singing together or having our response. You'll be able to response, respond personally to Christ is risen. It's just not going to be the same. That, however, cannot and will not stop Easter from happening. And in some way, my guess is that this Easter will be in some ways even more significant. I think it will strengthen our faith. It will empower us even more fully to have the courage we need to be able to follow our risen Savior. When I think of the promise of Easter and the courage that it rings out in the very face of our daily fears, I'm reminded of the funeral service of Winston Churchill. Perhaps you know the story as well, but at the very close of the service that Churchill planned himself, a very single trumpeter stood at the very west end of St. Paul's Abbey and sounded taps, that song that signals dusk, the very end of the day. I know you know the tune. It's a a somber tune that's played at the end of every military funeral. But at Churchill's service, after a moment of stillness that followed the very haunting, that last haunting note of that song, there was another trumpeter who stood at the east end of St. Paul's, the, the end that faced the rising sun, and that trump, trumpeter started to pr play reveille, the song of the morning, the call to a new day. Churchill wanted people to know and believe that Jesus' resurrection signals above and beyond all else that our God, our God is a God of new life and a God of never-ending possibility. The good news of Christ's resurrection does not take away our fear as much as we'd like it to, but it offers us courage and hope anchored in the promise that God indeed will have the last word. And that last word is a word of life and light, grace and mercy, love and peace. You see, there is and there will always be an Easter. And with that, 
you will always be, as I have told you before, you will always be Easter people. That's the message I hear in Matthew's account that first Easter morning. It's a, it's a wonderful mix of our fears, but also a reminder that we are Easter people, that there will always be Easter, and that we are God's Easter people who are intended to take that message out to the world, to go from the tomb and tell the good news. Matthew's version of that first Easter morning is different in many ways from the other gospel writers. According to, the, according to Matthew, the first witnesses that came to the term, tomb, as you heard, were Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, two of the women who, had, is record, who are recorded to be at the foot of Jesus when he died on the cross. Now the other gospel writers have additional women who are with them, other than John who only has Mary Magdalene come to the tomb. But these two women, according to Matthew, were also with Joseph of Arimathea when he put Jesus into that tomb. And now they've come again, early on the first day of the week, to look at the tomb. To look at the tomb. Matthew says nothing about them bringing spices to anoint Jesus' body, as Mark and Luke do, but simply to come and see the tomb. And who is this other Mary? In all likelihood, the other Mary is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Matthew's decision to not identify her as, her as Jesus' mother may seem a bit odd, but I think it makes sense. I think his purpose is to emphasize not their biological relationship, but to emphasize that Mary was also a disciple of Jesus, a very key message in Matthew's Gospel. Matthew is also different in that when these women arrive, the stone is still in place. It was only after the earthquake, which it seems it almost happens because of this descending angel that comes from heaven, but it was the angel, it says, who came and rolled the stone away from the tomb. Matthew is also the only one to include the guards who are posted there, who shake with fear at the earthquake and at the angels coming. And ironically, did you hear how they react to the opening of the tomb? They become like dead people. <laughs> Given this whole scene, it's understandable that these women were also afraid. So it's no wonder the angels' first words to them are words of comfort and courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. The angel's instructions, however, do not stop there. After the fear and after the words of courage comes a command. Come and see. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples. Tell them he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. That is my message for you. And they do. The women go. They come and see, and then they go and tell. And Matthew says that as they leave, they do so with a mixture of fear and joy. Isn't that our reality today as well? That even as we hear the good news that the tomb is empty, that Jesus has been raised, don't we also anticipate going from this point forward in our lives, influenced by the fear of the day. And yet there's joy. We're fearful, certainly, of the reality of death, but we're fearful also of the long-term effects this pandemic may have on our future. And yet there's joy. There's joy in knowing that we are Easter people, that God has not and will not abandon us. We may fear what will happen to our children in an even now more dangerous world, and yet we have great joy in knowing the blessing they are to us and the continued blessing they will have, hopefully, to the world. We may fear the fate of loved ones who are struggling in any number of ways, and yet we have joy in knowing that they are part of our lives. 
We may fear the future of our congregation and of the church as a whole, and yet we have joy in our fellowship together, in our supports that we experience with one another, in our common call to proclaim the good news. When Jesus meets these women, he tells them, do not be afraid. And I think that gives us insight into the very nature of our world, where there is indeed much to fear in our mortal lives. And yet the resurrection of Christ creates the possibility for joy and hope and courage and so much more. Why? Because Easter changes everything. In the resurrection, you see, we have God's promise that life, that Life is stronger than death, that love is greater than hate, that mercy overcomes judgment, and that all the sufferings and difficulties of this life are, are temporary. Yes, they're very real and sometimes painful, but they do not have the last word, and they do not represent the final reality. Fear and joy, despair and hope, doubt and faith, these are the two sides of our lives that are very real in our world. But in the end, we have heard the resurrection promise that joy, hope, and faith will ultimately prevail. That is the good news we as Easter people are invited to come and see today. And it is also the message of good news that we are called to go and tell to a world filled with fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So let us take heart. Let us take to heart Jesus' words that Jesus speaks to those women as they go from the tomb, as we go with them. Jesus says, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters the good news. The tomb is empty. He is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Uplifted by the promise of hope and healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you have given the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our hearts to hear their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, you love this world so much that you gave your one, one and only Son that we might be called your beloved children too. Lord, help us to live in the gladness and grace of being your Easter people every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in grace and tell your good news to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of resurrection, we continue to pray for our nation and the world as we face the uncertainties and devastating effects of the coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, continue to guide the leaders of our nation and of the world as they navigate the many decisions before them. Grant them, along with all the medical researchers and scientists, the wisdom and strength to work through this crisis and provide help and assistance that is needed. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of resurrection, we weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle all who are fearful, those who are suffering in any way, and those who are dying. Assure them and all of us of your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, in Jesus you have gone ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember today all our loved ones who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and rest in you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the light of the risen Christ reveal to us in God's holy word, strengthen your faith, and make glad your hearts. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. You are members of the body of Christ. We are workers in the kingdom of God. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Let us share together our closing hymn, Thine is the Glory. <laughs> 